Let's take our Bibles and turn to Hebrews chapter 1 now. Hebrews chapter 1. We are uh, using the first uh, little bit of Hebrews for our communion services these months. And uh, today our topic is sustainer of all things. So I'm going to put on the screen the two verses, Hebrews 1, verse 2 and 3, where we're deriving the various aspects of the Lord Jesus. Uh, this we have two more uh, messages, uh, 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 communion messages from this. So that'll be May and June, and then I'll have to have a different topic for <clears throat> July. Hebrews chapter one, verses two and three. In these last days, uh, God has spoken to us in His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, through whom also He made the world, and He is the radiance of His glory and the exact representation of his nature, and upholds all things by the word of his power. That's our phrase for this week. When he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So the phrase is, upholds all things by the word of his power. Now, to start off, I want you to notice that the first phrases of the description describe the son's nature, who he is. He's the heir of all things. He is the creator through whom also he made the world. He is the radiance of God's glory. He is the exact representation of God's nature. All right. Now he upholds all things. This comment speaks to our our Lord's relation to all things, to what he does. And in fact, when it says all things, that means to every atom of the universe. He upholds all things by the word of his power. But even more than that, it speaks not only of atoms and the physical world, but it speaks of the spiritual world as well. This is one thing, one truth that is in scripture. We find little hints of it here and there that <clears throat> speak about his role of sustainer of all things. And I do think it is uh, something that we do need to call to mind, that we need to think about. So the proposition for this afternoon, all things exist by his word. So the first thing we'll talk about is the scope of his power, all things. What is included in all things? Well, John 1, 3 says, all things came into being through him. And apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. So... That obviously means the physical universe. If you go back to Genesis 1, it begins, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And we, we read there that the very first thing God made is the heavens and the earth. In verse 3 of Genesis chapter 1, God says, Let there be light. God created the light. In chapter or verse 6, uh, the King James uses the word firmament. I I basically take that to be uh, creating an atmosphere around the earth. That's my understanding of that. Maybe somebody else will have a better understanding. Verse 9 and verse 11. He separates the waters from the waters. The the dry land appears. The plant and plants of all kinds. There's life and and, uh, growth and everything comes onto those plants, all things. He made all those things. Verse 14 of Genesis chapter 1, God made the sun and the moon and the stars. He made all those things. Uh, Verse 20, all the living creatures of the sea. So the fish and the uh, whales and the, you know, the plankton and the little tiny single-celled organisms and the uh, all things, everything that is in the sea, he made. All the living things on the earth in verse 24 of Genesis chapter 1. So lions and tigers and spiders. and Somebody t- has put up in Vancouver, they put up a giant spider underneath a bridge. Have anybody seen a picture of this? And yes, and it is creepy. But God made the spiders. Just think about that. For those of you who get freaked out by them. All right, I don't particularly like them. And I step on them. But <laughs> God made them. All right, the Lord made them. All the living things on the earth, and man, Genesis 1, 26. God made man, male and female, uh, made he them. 
Well, not only the physical universe did God make. This is something that is little mentioned. But here's a couple of verses that speak about something else. Colossians 1.16 For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on the earth, visible, physical things, and invisible, spiritual things, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. So when we see that phrase, when it says thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, we usually take that to mean the ranking of, of authority amongst the angels. So the power is amongst the angels, for by him all things were created. So even the angels. So another verse, Psalm 40, uh, 148, verse 2, Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. So, again, the scriptures say the angels were created by the Lord. And then Genesis 2.1. This one is a little uncertain. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed, and all their hosts. Does the, the word hosts include the angels in Genesis 2.1? Well, I am, my bias is, yes, it probably does. The question is, does it include the angels? Well, it doesn't explicitly say, so there's a bit of debate about it. But certainly, Colossians 1.16, Colossians 1.48.2 say that God created all things, including the spiritual things. So that means <clears throat> all the angels. So we think of Gabriel and Michael and all of the other angels that are mentioned not by name, but are mentioned in the Bible. So we think of those good servants of God, the angels. But also, all the fallen angels, all the demons, they were created by God. They rebelled, they turned away from God, but they were created by God. And that means Satan himself is a creature made by God. All things means all things. right? The scope of his power. He... Uh, made all things, but not only that, in our text it says, he upholds all things by the word of his power. So that moves us on to the work of his power, the scope of his power, all things, the work of his power, upholding. So what is upholding? The basic meaning of this word is to carry. So when you know, we were having lunch here, I was watching the ladies carrying the dishes out onto the table. They were bearing, they were upholding the dishes as they moved from one to the other. I noticed that a spoon fell to the floor. And guess what? When I went through the line, I knocked the same spoon on the floor. And I did go in and wash it and put it back after I washed it. But anyway, but, but we, you know, you're bearing, you're carrying something. All right? Now, so picking up something and carrying it from one place to another or holding something you've picked up. So you've got something in your arms, you're holding it, you're, you're bearing it, you're upholding. That's the idea. All right, so from holding, okay, so just carrying a burden, it means, it slips into a meaning, meaning sustaining. So you could say metaphorically, uh, if you're out working at a job, what you're doing is you're upholding, you're bearing your family. You're putting clothes on their backs, you're putting food in their stomach, you're putting a roof over your, their head, you are bearing, you're upholding, you're sustaining your family. And you could use this word to talk about it. But there are some things that we need to note here on, in theologically. When it says, he upholds all things by the word of his power, that means he is not the same as all things. Okay, so the Bible never teaches anything remotely close to what is called pantheism, where God is equ equal to creation. Um, so he is outside creation. Uh, secondly, it means that God is active in moving creation towards its goal, uh, its, towards its destiny. Uh, he, if he's upholding all things, he is carrying it somewhere. 
And then thirdly, it means that the operations of natural laws are under his supervision. Supervision. Nothing happens without the Son's permission. Okay, so the, the Son of God, uh, uh, you know, we just, there were just some tornadoes down in the southeast, uh, damage in various places. I don't know if anybody lost their lives on these. Sometimes they do. But all of those things operate under the supervision and the power of Almighty God. That's what our phrase is saying. But back to the all things. All these things that we've listed in point one, the sun, the moon, the stars, the animals, the sea creatures, and man, and even the rocks and the trees, and all the spirits, and all, even Satan and his hosts, are upheld by him. But how? How are they held? Well, here's what the text says. The operation of his power, by his word, by his word. It says... He upholds all things by the word of his power. So this reminds me of that verse that we find in Colossians 1.17. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So compare that to our text. He upholds all things by the word of his power. In our text, Hebrews 1.3, when it says, by the word of his power, this, there's two words that are translated word in the Greek New Testament. One has, is the one, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. That is logos, the thought of God. The, the, it has more to do with a concept, not individual words. The word translated here has to do with individual words or individual statements. All right. So, in Hebrews, this word is used exclusively of God. It's God's word that does something. So, by God's word, in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 5, by God's word, by God's decree, believers are saved. Okay, by the word of God, by, what, by, the, by the declaration of God, He declares... Someone who puts their faith in Jesus Christ to be born again. And then uh, in Hebrews 11 and verse 3, the chapter of faith, he, he declares, by God's word, the heavens were made. That harks back to Genesis 1. God said, let there be light. By God's word, the heavens were made. And then at God's word at Sinai, Hebrews 12 and verse 19, the Israelites were terrified. Those were the utterances of God, the Ten Commandments. Those were ten words, that's sometimes called. So the focus on individual words speaks of the sons commanding the universe's existence. The very act of utterance is what sustains things. F.F. F. Bruce in his commentary says, the creative utterance w that which called the universe into being, okay, so God, let there be light, requires, he says, that's the creative utterance, requires as its complement, as its partner, that sustaining utterance by which it is maintained in being. So, <clears throat> in Greek mythology, uh, I remember learning about some of these things in school. I'm not quite sure why we had to learn them, but we did. So there's this figure named Atlas. Does anybody know why At what Atlas is famous for? Emily. Holding up the whole earth, right? The world, you see pictures of him. He's got the earth world on his shoulders, right? That must be very uncomfortable. <laughs> All right. But here's the thing. Atlas carries... The world on his shoulders. But what the Bible says is that the world, uh, that the Son carries all creation with his breath. He sustains all things by the word of his power. He simply speaks and it exists. Why is it that we remain here on this earth and live out this life? By His Word. We consist. He, he keeps us all going. 
Now, we look at all the terrible things in the world and we think, oh, what a world. He keeps it all going. When he's ready, he will bring it to an end. By a word. Okay. So when we worship him, this is our, for our communion service this afternoon, when we worship him in communion, well, we praise the Lord for our redemption. We praise him, Lord Jesus, thank you for redeeming us, for coming to earth, living a sinless life, dying on the cross as our substitute from sin, taking on yourself the guilt of our sins, rising from the dead to be uh, live forever and to be able to give us a share in your eternal life. We praise the Lord for our redemption. We remember that even while redeeming sinners, while he hung on that cross, his will kept the universe functioning. It's a remarkable thought. He upholds all things by the word of his power, it says. That means that even as he hung on that cross, every aspect of reality depended on him. The nail depended on him. The Roman soldiers depended on him. The very wood of the cross depended on him. He upholds all things by the word of his power. We recall that his will allows his enemies to continue their existence. Why does God why is there evil in the world? One reason is that God allows it to continue. It, it will fulfill his purposes. It will redound to his glory, but it is something that he allows. And so we bow our knees at the communion table, figuratively speaking, because he kept us in existence until we would trust him. You see, there was a time in our life when we didn't know the Lord. We were going our own way. We had our own agenda. We had our own thoughts. But God, in his mercy, at some point, brought his word to bear on our lives, and we heard the word of God. And we heard that we could believe in Jesus Christ and be saved. And he kept us going until that time. I often think of our dear friend, Wally Russell, when I think of this very topic. And he's passed on, I forget how many years now. Quite a few. And he, but he, when I first met him, he first became a Christian, joined our church, was baptized, all that. But he would tell me stories of things that happened to him during the Second World War. There were, there were amazing stories. That, that they, he would tell me stories where the hair would stand up on my head. It was so shocking. First time he told them to me. But I said to him one day, I said, Wally, he got saved at 75 years of age. After a lifetime apart from God. I said, Wally, God let you live through all those experiences. He kept you alive so that you could trust him. And that's exactly true for all of us as well. We bow to him because he has sustained us. And so let's think about that proposition. All things exist by his word, including you and me. Including you and me. And so we worship him for what he has done for us in saving us. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for this time today in looking into this passage and into this text. Lord, I pray that as we worship the Lord Jesus in communion, that our hearts would be stirred to live a life that is devoted to following after Jesus and obeying him in all things. We pray these things in Jesus' name.